What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the Full 90. It is time for the Week 14 Premier League predictions on the channel. We had a very interesting week last week, so we're going to start off and see how I did with my predictions. Shout out the comment of the week, and then we'll move on from there to the upcoming week's predictions. So first of all, I want to give a shout out to Kimberly Sanderson for leaving her score predictions on last week's video. She's left a comment on most of my Premier League prediction videos, so I thought it was about time to include her in a video. So shout out to you. If you do want to be included in a future video then just leave your comments on the Premier League prediction videos to be featured in the next one. Uh, I am going to pre-record a few of the upcoming Premier League predictions videos because I am going away for a week to Paris so I won't be able to make the video so the next two or three Premier League prediction videos will be pre-recorded before the results of the previous week but then we'll get back into regular scheduling and stuff like that but anyway the week 13 I had a fairly decent week actually and um, yeah so let's just talk about the predictions. The first game uh, was Brighton versus Leicester and in the end I went with a 2-1 win to Leicester but I, I, I said in the video how on the fence I was and I really was thinking about a 1-1 but I stuck to my guns and went with the Leicester win and it ended up being a 1-1 game in the end so I would have been right had I you know changed my mind like I was going to but very close there. The next game Everton versus Cardiff I predicted 3-1 to Everton Everton scoring with free-flowing attacking play and Cardiff getting the goal back because you know they're fairly all right on the attack and it actually ended in a 1-0 win to Everton. Very, very close and kind of unlucky I guess you could say for Cardiff to walk away from that with nothing going to Goodison Park and only losing by the one goal. The next game was Fulham versus Southampton and I said that something was going to go right for Fulham and that they were going to win this game. And I said they were going to win this game 2-1 with both teams to score. Uh, I was right with the result and both teams to score. But it actually ended up being a 3-2 goal fest. Uh, Mitrovic and Schurler, the two main men that I always talk about when I talk about Fulham. Scoring the goals for them. Securing them their first win under Ranieri. Like I said, whether or not he had actually something to do with it is, you know, obviously he had something to do with it. But whether or not the players would have done it anyway is a different story. We don't necessarily know. But a good result for Fulham, just like I predicted. The next game was Manchester United versus... Versus Crystal Palace. This was the third consecutive 2-0 prediction that I predicted in the Premier League that ended in a nil-nil. I can't believe Man United aren't beating Crystal Palace at home. It's it's very interesting. Um, but yeah, that one ended nil-nil. The next game, Watford versus Liverpool. I said Liverpool three goals to one, and Liverpool actually won three goals to nil. So very very close there. But Liverpool doing the business as always. Similarly, in the next game, uh, I predicted Man City to beat West Ham three goals to nil. They went one better as Manchester City often do, and they won the game four goals to nil now the next game was obviously that I guess you could say the shock of the week Tottenham played absolutely brilliantly I said it would be a 1-1 draw um, between Tottenham and Chelsea and Tottenham walked away 3-1 winners I've, I've heard that it was Chelsea's worst performance of the season obviously it's their first loss and maybe that is a little bit of a reality check for them maybe Tottenham having a bit of a shaky period early on obviously losing to Inter Milan in the Champions League and then you know having that sketchy period of, about a month or two ago that's really pushing them to do well in towards the festive period which if you're doing well there that is great because there's a lot of games one after the other in December so very good result for Tottenham the next game we have my correct score I'm not sure if I said this in the video but I did I know I said it to my friend at least I said I reckon it would be 1-1 at half time and 2-1 at full time because I just I, I can't see Arsenal leading at half time and that is exactly what happened it was 1-1 at half time and 2-1 at full time so that's twice I've got a half time full time correct score for Arsenal I predicted 1-1 half time and 3-1 full time against Crystal Palace and um, this time in the Bournemouth game I just I felt like Bournemouth had a little bit more class than Crystal Palace keeping Arsenal down to 2-1 instead of 3 one. So the only exact score uh, this week being the Arsenal and Bournemouth game. The next one, Wolves versus Huddersfield. The only one I didn't do well on. I got it totally wrong. I reckon it would have been a 1-0 win to Wolves at home, keeping the defence solid like they usually do. But I actually watched a bit of this game and Huddersfield played really, really well. They played really, really well, and they deservedly got the 2-0 win. Nobody <laughs> nobody saw that coming, but they did manage it. And the next game, it's kind of similar to the Brighton-Leicester game. I, obviously, I was on the fence about being a 1-1 or a 2-1. And this game, I went the other way. Instead of saying a 2-1 prediction, I went and went with the 1-1 prediction. But in my head, I was like... I said if anyone was anyone was going to win, it would be Newcastle and that it would be a 2-1. And then, of course, Newcastle went and won 2-1. So if I stuck to my if, if I stuck to my like gut instinct and went 1-1 Brighton and Leicester and 2-1 Newcastle and Burnley, I would have had three correct scores in that week. But I was just sat on the fence, but very, very close with every single prediction, really, apart from the Wolves and Huddersfield upset. So that is good to know. Now... We move on to a group of games that I really struggled, actually, to get results for this. Like, there is, I think, 
1% chance, if that, there's a lot of people on YouTube, if you watch my videos, you probably watch theirs as well, just as I do, I love watching Premier League predictions videos, I, I will be very, very surprised if there's anyone who chooses all 10 predictions just like me, or even, even, even half, you know, because I am going, I don't know, I don't know if it's risky, but I just, Part of me thinks they're not going to happen, but then when you go for the predictable scores, um, they never come like they never come true. You never get ten out of ten score, you know, correct score predictions. Otherwise, you're insane. Like I actually, I I put these uh, correct scores into an accumulator. These ten correct scores for today's video, and the odds of them all happening came to about twenty three billion to one. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's uh, not going to happen really. Uh, but you know. You've got to predict the score, and some score's got to happen, so we'll go through either way, kicking it off with Cardiff against Wolves. Now, this was a tricky one. Cardiff held Everton to just a 1-0 loss, and Wolves lost to Huddersfield 2-0, so I was very, very tempted. This is basically exactly the same as the Brighton and Leicester game. On paper, you think Leicester should beat Brighton, and on paper, you think Wolves should beat Cardiff. I was on the fence, though, about putting it 1-1 between Brighton and Leicester because Leicester weren't having the best time, and it was a home game for Brighton. I'm exactly the same here. I'm so tempted to put it 1-1 Cardiff and Wolves because Wolves aren't having the best time and it's home for Cardiff. But like last week, I'm sticking <laughs> with my original 2-1 prediction to Wolves. So if this one ends 1-1, I just, I just got to give up. The next game is Crystal Palace against Burnley. Now, here's the thing, right? I've gone for my prediction here. Uh, I think it's about time Crystal Palace get a decent result. And that's why I'm kind of going with this prediction. However, however... Uh, maybe I didn't want to put another 2-1. Maybe that's why I've gone with this score lane. But I watched Burnley versus Newcastle. And although Newcastle won, I was quite impressed with the way Burnley played. Particularly towards the end of the first half. I think had that half gone for another five minutes, Burnley would have broken them down and scored. And the, the halftime break really changed the tempo of the game. And it all went towards Newcastle's favour in the second half. Something happened on that break. I don't know what Benitez said to them. Something happened on that break that made them play a little bit better. But... First half, it was it was Newcastle from two set pieces, I guess you could say against the run of play, and it was all Burnley. They were unlucky to get nothing out of that game. So if Burnley play that well, I expect them to get a goal in this game. But I just think Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park, it is about time that something changes for them. Wilfred Zahar to actually get some goals again. Um, I heard he played quite well against Man United, you know, played a big part in keeping that 0-0. I'm going with a Crystal Palace 2-0 win here. Okay, the phone is ringing. Wait for the receptionist to pick up. There we go. The next game is a very difficult one to pick as well, and that is Huddersfield versus Brighton. Like I said about the Wolves-Huddersfield game, Huddersfield played very, very well. They played like a top half of the table team, and Wolves, who you'd expect to be top half of the table, I guess you could say, played like a, a lower mid-table team. You know, they didn't really play that well, and Huddersfield just really controlled that game. Brighton's away form is really, really bad. However, they've been going on a great run of form. Brighton, they're doing really, really well. Glenn Murray is firing, despite being in, obviously, like a mid to lower table team as Bri with Brighton. He's right up there with the goal scorers, with the like of Hazard, Aubameyang, those two are the leading goal scorers, Aguero, Raheem Sterling. I think he's on seven now. So he's doing extremely well, and that is why I can't separate the two teams. Huddersfield at home, you could say, have the advantage. Brighton are notoriously bad away from home. So that's why I'm going with a 1-1 one, one score draw in this fixture. I think I'm going to change my prediction here. Okay, so the next game is Leicester versus Watford. Now, these two teams are kind of erratic in the sense you could see both teams scoring three goals on one day and both teams getting battered 3-0 on another day. So it's very, very difficult. I originally had a 2-2 score prediction, um, but I think I'm actually going to change that. I'm going to go with a 2-1 away win to Watford. I think uh, Madison will be suspended from this game because of his red card uh, in the previous game that he got against Brighton, which was kind of unfortunate. It was a second yellow. And I think the second yellow was actually for diving, which you could argue in any circumstances. I don't know the, the situation and how bad the dive was, but you could argue in any circumstance that that is a little bit harsh, uh, I would say. But Leicester, with 10 men, managed to claw back a goal uh, against Brighton, which was good. But I think without Madison, who is a key player for them, and although they're at home, I just don't think Leicester have really hit the ground running and really found their form. Like, I expected them to beat Brighton. I've expected them to do more. And I did originally put this at 2-2, so if it does end 2-2... That's kind of a win, I guess. But I think without Madison, I think Watford are, they need Watford need a result. And I think maybe this is going to be the week 
Uh, given that Madison is suspended, I think maybe Watford can get something out of this. Troy Deeney firing it up a little bit. I'm going to go with a 2 1. Watford scoreline. The next game is the destructive Manchester City at the Etihad against Bournemouth. Bournemouth coming off a 2-1 loss to Arsenal and Manchester City coming off a 4-0 away win to West Ham. I'm going with a 5-1 scoreline here. I think when Manchester City get the fourth goal maybe, they might be caught out at the back by some quick pace from the Bournemouth forwards and Bournemouth might nick a goal, you know, bottom corner, that type of thing, side foot, you know, that kind of finish, that sort of goal, quick pace. But I do think Manchester City are going to absolutely destroy here. Uh, tonight um, at the time of recording I am actually going to watch the Leon Manchester City game. I'm so excited to watch that game. Obviously Leon winning the previous fixture being the only team to beat Man City this season. It's bound to be a great game so I'm excited to watch that but I'm going with like I said Manchester City 5, Bournemouth just 1. I'm fortunate for Bournemouth that they've had the run of results that they have. I think they are playing still just as well but they're getting a little bit unlucky with the results uh, you know losing to Man United losing to Arsenal. Both games I correctly predicted a 2-1 scoreline it's just been a little bit difficult for Bournemouth to actually pick up the points that I feel like they deserve. And I don't see them getting any points, obviously, against Manchester City at the Etihad Stadium. The next game is Newcastle versus West Ham. West Ham on a bit of a downward slope. Newcastle right on the way up. And I actually, I see it continuing. Newcastle have a perfect game here to get another win. I think this would be their fourth win in a row, which is absolutely unreal, by the way. But Newcastle are in the perfect position to do it. They're against a sort of, I guess you could say subpar West Ham at this point at their home ground on a high from winning these games playing really well you know yes they beat like Burnley which is Burnley uh, they've been shaking stuff but West Ham they've just received an absolute battering from Man City and I think their confidence is going to be lower than Newcastle and I think Newcastle can win this game two goals to one had I stuck with my gut and gone with Newcastle to win 2-1 like I thought it would have come through, so that's what I'm going for. The next game is Southampton versus Manchester United, and I think, although United are having a shocking time drawing to Crystal Palace, I think they're going to win this game. It's going to paper over the Mourinho cracks. I think Man United are also going to beat Young Boys in the Champions League. I predicted 2-0 for that. We'll see how that turned out. I'm going with a 3-1 win here to Mourinho. I just think it's about time Man United get some goals. I think they will concede because they're leaky, and I think Southampton will have the passion at home to get at least a goal. Maybe it'll end 1-1. That, that is also a scoreline that could happen, but I'm going with the Man United win here. The next game is Chelsea versus Fulham. Fulham coming off of a good win. Chelsea coming off of a very bad loss. Uh, I think Chelsea are going to turn up. They're going to just make a statement and say, you know, we're, we're still here. We're still in the race. We want to we wanna play ball, basically. And I'm going with a 3-1 win to Chelsea against Fulham. After that, we have the game of the weekend. Arsenal versus Tottenham. I, I normally like to wear Arsenal shirts for my full 90 videos, uh, but I did wear the Arsenal shirt. Uh, when I recorded yesterday, so it just so happens I don't have the Arsenal shirt today. It would have been great for the thumbnail, but it is what it is. And um, I'm obviously I'm an Arsenal fan, but I think this might be. Mm, this is going to be so tough. This might be one of the situations where Arsenal get found out a little bit. They haven't lost since they lost 3-2 to Chelsea and 2-0 to Man City before that in August, I think. That's the last time they've lost this season. It's unreal. 16 maybe, possibly 17 games unbeaten. Uh, they might have Europa League as well, so that might change. I'm not entirely sure. But... I think this Tottenham side are on a high. I expect them to be into Milan, two goals to one, and I'm going with the exact same scoreline here. Maybe I'm appearing unbiased to try and not appear biased for the team that I support, which is Arsenal. But I'm going to say in this video a 2-1 scoreline to Tottenham. Um, but just like the Liverpool game, Arsenal could easily get a draw out of it. Maybe Arsenal will win. Don't get me wrong. I would love, I would absolutely love an Arsenal win here. That would be my favourite result. But... I think if I'm being realistic, but also a little bit risky because Arsenal are a decent side and they are at home and they've got good attacking power. I'm going to go with a 2-1 Tottenham win. Don't hate me, Arsenal fans. I want them to win, but let's just see what happens. And the final game is Liverpool versus Everton. Obviously, I'm going to be watching the PSG Liverpool game. That is going to be super exciting, uh, but I am going to go with a Liverpool win here. Just two goals to nil. Quite low scoring for Liverpool, but they, they haven't been scoring as many lately. So that is going to be the score there. Liverpool 2 Everton nil. So that is going to do it for my week 14 predictions. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like on it. Subscribe today and turn on the bell to be notified every single time I make a new video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video very soon. I, I would have talked more about the Liverpool game, but I'm going to be honest, my camera is about to run out. So yeah, catch you later. <laughs>